So um, thank you once again for being here. And um, if you happen to watch it in the future because this is recorded, um, but it's great to have um, you watch this session with one of our clients. So to begin with, um, I would say that Rima Consult is an immigration consultant firm where we've held a lot of clients at EB1 and IW. Um, and part of it is to encourage international students, um, immigrants, um, non-immigrants as well, to um, know about the processes involved and the whole um, opportunities to be able to self-petition without the need for uh, any employer sponsoring you. Um, so before we begin, I guess one of the most important things is I'm going to put in the chat um, the YouTube channel where um, if you can um, just subscribe so that you get every update once we send any our announcement. Okay. I'm just putting it in the chat now. So you can just take the time to just um that being said, today we are going to interview one of our clients. Um he's in the person of Wilson. Um before we even start any questioning, I just would give him a couple of minutes to uh, briefly introduce himself, and then from there we can start the questions. Usually, the pattern of this whole interview is kind of um, get an in-depth description of the strategies that we used um, to um, get the success for Wilson. Um, so after that, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions within reasonable time, if, if time will permit. So that being said, if you have any question or questions, you can jot it down. And then after the interview, we would um, take those questions. So um, Wilson, just, just give us a description of who you are. And then from there, we can begin with the questions. Right. Well, yeah. Thank you so much, boss. As I always call him, uh, I always call him boss, and he always call me boss. But I know he's the boss. Um, right. Um. Basically, I had my first degree in Ghana, and then had a master's all in Ghana, and then come to I I think I came to the US in twenty twenty one when I went to University of Minnesota, and then. I had another master's in animal science. In Ghana, I had uh, just general Greek in master's. And then I went for master of philosophy in animal breeding and genetics. Um, those who are animal scientists will know that when you talk of animal breeding, we have the, uh, the quantitative and then the qualitative aspect. But I did quantitative animal breeding, which does not involve any lab stuff, it's just statistics and then those kind of stuff. That's what I did in Ghana. But when I came to the US University of Minnesota, I did the animal science that I did, I was more into health related kind of research thing. Then right after that, I think in 2022, I got done with the masters. So I spent roughly two years there. Then I came to in uh, no Dakota State University for PhD, and currently I'm a PhD student. I'm not yet a candidate, so I'm still under process. But here I'm doing microbiological sciences, which is looking at the gut microbiome and then how it influences productivity and then efficiency of animals. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. No, that, that that was a very scientific introduction. But thank you for doing it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Um, so 
I guess would would move on to the interview itself. Um, again, I, I hope you can hear me. Like I'm just recovering from a bit of um new like um six symptoms. So if you can't hear me, just let me know. Maybe if it's clear to me, that's also fine. But the first thing I'll ask is how, how do you feel about um the approval notice itself? Um I I feel fulfilled. I feel like um uh, the efforts have paid off. I feel like um, um, to some extent, I would say that the education has paid off <laughs> because sometimes you look at how much has been invested in going to school and then the time and everything, and you're asking yourself, is it worth after everything, would you be able to gain some money back? But I don't know. I after this, was it the day that I got the email? I was like, oh, at least this all year round education has finally paid off some way. So I feel like uh, um, I feel fulfilled for the rest of the approval notice that we got. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad that the um, Rima Consult was able to help. Um make you fulfilled like you're saying so i'm guessing you're really satisfied with the approval notice as well right definitely okay so the the the, the thing is how did you learn about rima consult like how did you get to know about um, rima i think um somewhere last year the national union of uh, ghanaian students on campus as ndsu invited you for a talk where we talk about what you do, how you go about it, if anyone has a question. So that was the first time I heard about you. And then I tried to do research more, research more about you and what you do. So I follow you on YouTube. Then there was one time, was it, uh, somewhere 15th or 23rd December last year, you got one coffee who got approval from Ghana. So I joined the Zoom meeting and I listened to Kofi. I was like, oh, wow, this has to be real. Um, so <laughs> I, that was where I sent you a message and then you replied back to me. But I was very hesitant at that moment too, even after that then. Yeah, I think you, you reach out to me once and we're like, what's up? And I'm like, yeah, I, I'm still deliberating on issues. But yeah. So I got to hear about you first during the, you're coming, you're, you're coming to NDSU uh, to talk to NDSU students. And then that's of Kofi's um, interview. That's how come I got to know you. Okay. So <clears throat> you, you heard about Rema consults. I'm sure you've heard about different firms, um, like different right. uh, organizations. What what right. is it about? Why did you decide to go with Real Man Consult? Why why didn't you go elsewhere? Yeah, truth be told, I reached out to the chain uh, immigration about I think two years ago, and I just sent I think my CV to them, and they gave me three pages email. And it's full of questions. And I, I'm kind of a bit busy. So when I look at the email and what they're requesting, I'm like, man, do I have time to answer all these questions in just an email? In uh, So it took me two weeks to ponder over the email. So I ignore it. Moreover, I look at um, how much they're charging. And my stipend is not something to write home about. So looking at how much they're charging, I guess, and um, I don't have, I'm not there yet. Maybe I need to put things together. And then, yeah. Definitely. So um, it's a great to know that. And one of the things that we pride ourselves in at Rima Consult is the fact that, of course, our prices are very reasonable, uh, while we do a very personalized and great job. And I guess, one of the things I would ask you is what convinced you to actually take the step to 
to go with Rema Consult. Uh, and yeah, I guess we'll start from there. Um, I think one uh, Rema Consult is resort oriented. I can feel within the the joy in uh, Kofi's voice, and I have followed up with you and listening to some like you could see that these people are not faking anything this is a real thing that they are doing and then two about the the price and compared to those out there now given that he decided to go with us some people are here they have different backgrounds um they are wondering whether or not they really want to uh do this um process um, so so tell us i know you may have service but people are coming in and all of those things so tell us a little bit about your background go into detail some of the things we use as strategy to be able to um gain the success that you worked in and um, anything that kind of um stood out to you um, in terms of some of the strategies we used um to get this um, approval Right. Um, so sometimes when I look at my personal profile, I feel it, um, how do you call it? It's a disturb or how confuse myself because it's <laughs> it's 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 not following the a straight path, as we say. Um, in you know in Ghana we had this uh, undergraduate degree where I my thesis or do we call it thesis or dissertation was on plant science and actually in agronomy then my MPhil is in animal breeding but if you look at the research that I did it's not detailed animal breeding like it's just like animal production then I went into research after masters to do breeding and I did some collaborative pub publication where a bit of nutrition, a bit of production, and then a bit of um, molecular genetic stuff in there. So I came to uh, Minnesota for masters, second masters, and then the work is a bit related to health related. So it's a bit diversion from that angle, but um, in all this, what Rema did was you're like, what at what funding and what who fund your work in Minnesota? Like, it's um, just some small grant. So when you check, you realize an NIH funding. You're like, well, that's a good news. Let's get a little of support from your previous um, professor, which we got, and then um, he stressed and lay emphasis on that later there more rather than trying to focus on the diversion of path in that research. And then and I moved in here to NDSU, I'm doing microbiological sciences and then the funding is uh, USDA. And then he we got a letter of support for that funding to which he lay more emphasis on. So you would be like, oh, plant science, animal breeding, health work, now microbiological science. So the, the part is not straight, but he tried to join the dots in order to tell a story, which he did. Yeah, definitely. I, I remember the very first conversation that um, we had. I mean, we've had a lot of them, so I, I don't know which one in which other, but one of the conversations, you were like, I did animal breeding here, and now you're doing microbes, and, and so you were kind of like, what are we selling, right? Like, um, but I guess mm -hmm. one of the things that you get when you come to Rema is really about thinking closely about what is really important to the United States, and how can I help, or how can the team help you be able to leverage those different experiences to be able to um show the USCIS that you have really national importance to the United States, right? So like you heard him, he had done a lot of different um projects st um, stemming from 
plant science from undergrad, um, animal breeding and microbes here in the United States. But for, for me, one of the things that I saw um, was that, well, all of these things are really important as far as we are talking about food security in the United States, as far as we are talking about uh, making sure that um, most of these products that are related to nutrition is really of good quality because in a nutshell, if you are eating products that are spoiled, like more specifically um, poultry, because he had some um, papers on poultry as well. If you are eating these kinds of products and it's spoiled, definitely it has health implications on the United States, right? So for, for me, it was about how do we help Wills and Godson to be able to leverage all these different experiences to really champion the fact that he's really advancing sustainable practices in agriculture in different facets. So uh, for me, I saw a very nice story of those differences is how we would sell his story. And of course, he was involved with a lot of different projects. Um, some of them were federally funded, like he said, NIH, USDA. And those also shows that um, whatever he's doing is really of national importance to the United States. Um, there were other things um, that were leveraged. For instance, the fact that he, um, he had a couple of citations, um, not a lot of them though, but um, we still spoke about the impact of each of these um, papers that he had published and what it meant as far as um, um, the national importance uh, of these research to the United States. So those are some of the things that um, we, we, we leveraged on. I guess I would ask you, um, did you think that it was going to be a straight approval from get-go, Wilson? Um, uh, I I don't think it's going to be because my aim was to just um work hard during this PhD project and then maybe publish more papers and then streamline things and then after maybe when I'm doing OPT then I try it but when I heard of Kofi's story and then I look at Kofi's profile like. Maybe I have some task refund. Let me just use it to do this and see. So I was very 50 50, and I knew that the task refund is a bonus money. So it's not really anything that I would be worried about. And there's no harm in trying. So I just went, well, let's do it. Okay. Okay. That's nice. And I'm glad you, you took that step. And like, you know, the rest is history. Today, we are here celebrating your success. We worked for about a month. How would you describe our services? To Yeah, how would you describe our services? Can you share some <laughs> impression of the services that were provided by Rema Consult? Uh, I would say, in one word, I would say timely and at a point, it looks like I was the one who was delaying things through the, because sometimes I'll see your email, I'll see your WhatsApp message, I'll see your text message, and you'll like, be like, boss, boss, hey, sub. Then I know that no, you needed information. But I was a bit busy. I would say, unfortunately, that time that we are gathering um, documents. That was the peak of my research project, so I was very busy. And so I was rather given excuses. And you are very timely when you set a deadline, you go by rate. And when you set a time, you go by the time. I think I was the one who was missing the time too for our meeting. I think the very first uh, meeting that we're supposed to have, I overslept. And then later I call you like, oh, that's fine. We can just talk on phone. Uh, I missed the first deadline and then it time. Right? You are timely with respect to your deliveries. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, what, what were some of the notable aspects of Rima consults that really stood out to you besides um, timeliness? Um, yeah, beside timeliness, like you said. Yeah. Um, I think besides timeliness, uh, 
you consider each for instance i am the only one uh, you consider my case very unique where you try when i read through the the first draft of the write-up i look at like no there's no way i'm going to do this and coin it the way you coin it i didn't know that my cv can be written in that from that perspective there's no way i would do that and because there are certain things i'm like oh this is a common knowledge that people should know that this but i think i read that comment you're like no they they don't assume you have to put it on paper and you have to support it and then so you took the case very unique and then you you tell a story with the cv and then i also realize one more thing you were more concerned about the success than the money which is something i noticed because after you guided me through to the day that i went to the post office to submit and then and you you request a video evidence of everything that i printed out and then submitted you were more concerned about have you get any uh, this in news? Well, I saw that like, and this man, you have been paid your money. What's the big deal? But he's more concerned about the success than his money and whatever. That's what I noticed. Yeah, but maybe it's um, it's it's nice that you are bringing some of these um, some of these qualities out. One of the things that you said that I think really important for those who are considering the NIW is the fact that um, in, in this whole process, you, you, you should not assume that the officer who is going to adjudicate your case uh, knows everything about you. You have to write it in a way that um, you are sending a very strong impression of yourself, right? So um, like you said, um, there were things that like you don't just say that I was awarded a graduate teaching assistant somewhere you have to talk about what, what is it about the graduate teaching assistant that makes you well positioned in your proposed endeavor those are some of the things that uh, Rima consult helps people to make a very strong case and um, more specifically to most of these officers that are um adjudicating these cases are not are not domain experts, right? Like they're great people. They don't don't get me wrong because this is recorded. But what I'm saying is that the, the officer may not be a researcher in say microbiology or may not be a researcher in say animal science, right? So you are writing a story to somebody who knows little about your research. So it's not all about just putting out the scientific jargons, but really writing it in a way that one of the things that I think you said about um, not making assumptions about um, anything, like really putting those things out. And so I'm glad you you brought that out. And um, so I guess what, what I'll say is, did, did you find transparency in this whole process? <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I would say that the process was very transparent. And then we each, when we started off, we each know where we are, what is the next step, what is it required. And then, so I knew almost everything. I think there was one time I was um, discussing with you, it looks like I now know the entire process, like what goes into it, what is required and everything. And what if I begin to do this on my own and then just to get some clients and then you're like, well, that's how transparent you want the whole thing to be. Yeah, so I know A to Z, what goes into it. I was involved in the entire process. Um, just that you are doing uh, much of the writing, which is good. Yeah. Yeah.
help. We just uh, maybe we will just have to start employing you since now you are the <laughs> new boss. <laughs> so based based on your experience, would you recommend Rema Console to others in in a similar situation? Yeah, definitely. I I think I didn't even end my process before I started talking to colleagues about you. Um, because it's not as I said, them you're not concerned about the money, but you want to see the the project come to a successful end where we celebrate the success, which is very unique. You hardly get that in this part of the world where um, everyone is about himself and that is it. But you went a step further and look beyond the the money and then you are more concerned. Seriously, that aspect, I was like, wow, well, he he's more concerned about my sizes. I thought he's, he's just doing his job, get his done and then go his way back. He's concerned about the sizes, which every client would love to work with such person. So I keep talking to my friends, those that I know that, oh, they have the same profile just as mine, and they can, you can do something for them too. So yeah, I'll recommend today, tomorrow, and forever, I'll keep recommending. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, there are people here who are considering this process. It's whether they want to go with Rema Consult or wh whatever firm, or even do it by themselves. I guess what what would be like your your motivation or inspiration for them to navigate this whole process. Like, what would you advise people that are considering this pro process? Um, yes. Um, one thing I would say is that after I got my approval, part of me was like, why didn't you do this early? Um, so what I would say is that don't procrastinate like I did. Um, just reach out to him and then he will tell you if your CV is there or not from the your first um, contact with him. And I think he's... I, I, last time I told him that he had to go and do law so that he... Because he's more than immigration lawyer or consultant. So he will tell you if you are in the right direction or not, if something needs to be um, improved upon for some couple of months to be able to get in. So don't procrastinate, just reach out to him and then he'll have a discussion one-on-one -on -one with you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I always tell people that myself, I, I wish I had done it a little bit earlier because I had so many different information that was way back about three years ago. Um, I had so many different informations, like you needed so many number of um, citations, so many number of publications, so many this, you need to finish a PhD, you need so many things. But um, I would always say that the best time to start is immediately you start graduate school so that before you end your schooling, you have everything in place and then um, things fall in nicely. So definitely, um, um it is great that you are also giving advice to those who are considering this whole process uh, as well. Um, so in what, like I always said, you've shared wonderful things um, about Rema Consult, but I think for every organization, it's also good to receive constructive criticism to be able to keep um, serving the needs of our clients. So in what ways do you think we could improve our services or better meet the needs of our clients? Yeah, um, before I talk about the weakness, um, I would also say that he also encouraged me because all the professors that I got the recommendation letters from, they call me and sit them down like, hey, what you're trying to do, you're not there yet. Um, why not give yourself up to the end of your PhD? All the three, those in Minneapolis call me on phone in the they told me that, but I still moved ahead. The good news, they were like, it's, it's a suggestion. You either take it or not. Either way, they gave the recommendation. So he encouraged to. Now, 
back to the weakness, uh, I, I think the, you need to have a website because it's not always that you would have to <clears throat> be picking up calls and then be, so I think you have to get a website and then maybe employ more assistance so that you will not be overwhelmed by customers because if they're trying to get in touch with you at the initial stage and they find it difficult, that may um, put them off. Uh, and then I think if you reduce the pressure a little bit because the, the pressure was coming and I'm like, man, I, I think I signed for this by yes, but the pressure was very, very, and which could result from maybe few uh, employees and then you have to do things fast in order to move to the next client. So yes, let uh, others, employ others and then make get a website so that you feel realized a bit. Yeah. I think all of those are in order. And like I said, um, yeah, those are great suggestions. With regard to the website, is still in place. In fact, it's a work in progress, so that's good. Mm, with regards to employing, I think now we have five members on the team, so things are getting a little bit streamlined. Um, so definitely moving forward, it's 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 going to be um going to get better. But definitely, we we take all of these things really important because, like you said. For us, it's really about uh, making an impact, which means we hear what our clients say. So definitely these are things that are really important. So thank you so much for sharing this. So I guess now I'd open it. Oh, in fact, Daniel has opted to, for me to employ. Well, I, I'm going to need decide whether or not you have green card. If you have green card, then I can employ you. If you don't have, then I may have to consider sponsoring you for each one of these. So. I would have to ask you all of those things after the interview. So Daniel, uh, be, be, be on the lookout. But um, now we would open the floor for um, any question or questions that you have within reasonable um, um, timelines. And then if not, definitely we can have a more detailed conversation in, in the near future. Oh, I have one. Um, Wilson, how long did it take you to um, the timeline between the time um, you processed, you set out your process till you had your acceptance or uh, email, what was the timeline like? How long did it take? Are you referring to the time I started processing or the time from which I submitted to the decision? I would say the process to the decision, the time you started that, the time you met with um, with bra ima till you had your decision uh, i think um we worked effectively for one month and then we submitted it took and um eight working days right so a month and then eight days oh well thank you that was very fast right Then, as you said, this I use the premium processing, which oh, okay. yeah, I don't know if I think there was one guy who received his in three days, so um, that it was eight days. Yeah, there was one guy who received it three days. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Hello, um, sorry, I want to ask a question to Wilson. Right. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I just want to ask, I'm sorry I joined late in case I'm asking what must have been said. That's I fine. just want to confirm, um, yeah, I realize you, uh, um, you have a degree or you are doing a degree in animal sciences. So um, did you have some publications, if you did, how many of them did you tender during your petition? And um, um, yeah, 
Or would, and then what other things do you use to back up your uh, position um, about if you actually have, um, I'm sorry, citations or publication from that, from your work? So I would really um, get appreciate your advice. Right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I think I have nine or 10 publications, but they're not strong. I think the highly cited one is uh, 24 among them, and then followed by is it 10 or five. So uh, I have, I had publications at the time of filing, about 10 publications, but they're not that strong. But yes, I have some publications which we leverage on in um, trying to uh, put, pull our dots together in pulling the case together. Okay, so if that is the case, do you suggest or do you advise someone that is having one or two, uh, maybe with other professional affiliations to and the conferences to give this a shot? Or maybe waiting until some publications are available? Um, with the little that I've seen or heard from this process, I would say that don't hesitate in giving the shot because you never know. I mean, you have two publications, but the citation is very. Um, both always said that don't just rely on publications, and then it also depends on the field that you are. So, uh, don't hesitate in reaching out to him. There's no harm in trying. Yeah, I'm so, actually in animal sciences. That's why I'm very specific. Animal science is very broad. Yeah. So poetry science specifically. Yeah. So I think I have some publication in poetry science too. And which are uh, egg egg quality and what have you. So oh yeah. And I one of the things that I also enjoy working with uh, Wilson was you 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 didn't only do egg quality. There was one I didn't know, maybe the poetry scientists can correct me if I'm wrong, but there are so many different types of eggs. You have Japanese egg, pale, plastic. No. It's, it's so nice learning about the weird things that all of the awesome people are doing out there. But yeah, this guy has been doing some different types of um, egg breeds and different stuff. It's, it's wonderful. Like he's doing some great work. And you know, US here, um, even even this Easter egg is a big thing, not just for food. It's, it's part of um, the culture that they do here. They buy a lot of eggs, they create them and play with them. So he's really making a lot of people happy. That's that's one of the reasons why he got an approval. I must say, just joking. But um, to answer your question, I, I didn't get your name, but to answer your question, I think um, there is no X number of publication. There is no X number of citations that makes someone extremely qualified or less qualified. It depends on how you tell the story. I have seen people get, have so many things, yet still they won't go to. I've helped so many people who have no publication, no citations, but experience and project-based um, um, work. And so um, to answer your question, there, there is there is no right number of things because USCIS hasn't indicated anywhere on their website that you need 10 pu a publication, you need 20 citation, no. They just ask you to explain your different experiences and your different projects and your different stuff that you are doing that makes you to be of national importance to the US. So if you're able to do that and show evidence for that, then you can convince an officer that you are of national importance and you are well positioned. For that reason, they should waive the requirement of labor certification and then grant you an NIW approval or EB1. No, EB1 is different from in terms of um, requirement. But basically, to answer your question, there is really no right number of like and, and you I shared my YouTube channel and you can see that there are clients that have helped that had no publication, no citation like Kofi 
Frank didn't have any citation. They are all there. You can go watch it. So there is no X number of publications that would work. There is no Y number of citations that would work. It's about how you tell the story and how you support that story with strong evidence and really making sure that it is really of importance to the um, U.S. And um, in, in, in the next month, we are starting April, there'll be more of these success interviews for different clients. And you'd see that their experiences and their citations is just varying. So there is no... There is no right number of citations to do this. There is no right number of publications. It depends on um, how you want to tell the story and how you can support that story to make the officer be convinced that it is really important that the U.S. doesn't lose you. Because in, in essence, what Rima Consul did for Wilson is really make an argument that U.S. stands to lose a lot if they do not grant Wilson and approval. And really it's about what is it about Wilson that makes him to be of national assets to the United States. He's done so many wonderful work. He's done some work on cattle production. He's done some work on poultry. He's done some work on, um, even with regards to the um, picklets. One of his the pieces that he did, he was looking at um, bones and um, how it's related to um, picklets. Uh, and most of these um, projects are really transferable to the humans, like because some of these results uh, um, can improve medicine uh, for human beings as well. So those are some of the things that Rema Consult did to be able to leverage it. And um, I guess one of the things he may have forgotten to mention was the fact that he read it and he said, it, it looks too good. And, and, and that is what we do here at Rema Consult, making sure that we make you look good and then support you with um, throughout this whole process as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for that um, explanation. So I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you very much. I also I was about to ask a follow up question, but then you did answer it because my when Wilson was speaking, my concern was what if you don't have publications? What if you don't have citations? Because your master's or your higher degree that you did didn't really have any research. What if you did an thesis master's? But uh, as you said, um, it's kind of a, a personalized experience and how you put out the story. So I think it's already answered. Thank you. Hello, Daniel. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Right. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to quickly, first and foremost, thank you for your philosophy and what you are doing for all of us. I really appreciate it. So my question is that, uh, what is the turnaround? I've got some friends who have watched you and they are very much interested and they would want to know like the turnaround. I believe perhaps there are so many people who are on the pipeline waiting. So if we were, they were to want to go with you, what is the turnaround, the process and everything? Thank you. I think um, when, when, um, when I just want to say we because now there are a lot of different people helping. But um, when a when a petition is started, whether I myself mostly now it's myself, but when a petition is started, effectively within one month, submission will be done. That that for sure. That 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 hasn't changed with regards to any client site. It, it, if, if, it, if it goes beyond one month, then it won't be on Rima. It's going to be on, maybe we needed something. Like sometimes Watson would go into, he goes onto the farm. He goes onto the <laughs> farm. And when he goes, he sleeps overnight. And so, you know, he doesn't sleep overnight. Like he stays throughout. And so he doesn't see his mail and all of those things. So the next day, and so those are some of the incidents. And sometimes he stays there over two days, three days. I, I don't know. He, they do so many things on the farm. Like all those doing animal signs, I respect you people. You do weird things with animals, and those are good. <laughs> so oh, those are some times that he kind of delayed the process. But um, if, if really I start any petition effectively within one month, and 
that that has always been the case. Thank Does you. Does that answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you very much. I think I have a follow-up question to that question. Um, so for now, how long is the queue if I so that if I'm talking to someone, I know that hey, this is how long the queue is. So the person have to be in the known. Right? New new client will be accepted beginning June. Yes, that's when new clients will be accepted. Um, okay. Right now, the aim is to finish up all the existing clients um, and then accept new clients beginning June. But one of the nice things that um, you get to work with Rema Consult is the fact that um, we can start the prep work. It's just that the main write-up won't start until June. So it isn't that nothing will be done, um, mm -hmm. but prep work and everything will be done so that once June begins, we, we can start the main write-up. Okay. That's good to know. Hello, Doc. It's my name. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, like you said, the proprietary works that you're talking of. You speaking of uh, starting the proprietary work that, that those things to start putting in place before the June. And I know how busy it is till now. I have not received a notification from you, and it's like I've been waiting. That's can why you confirm I still your can't last name. Can, can you confirm your last name? Sonio Emmanuel. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So, yes. We'll be in touch. Yes, my next question, Doc. All right. The next question is. Um, with the, the meetings that I attended so far, it looks like people who are resident in the US, more or less, are students. They are the people I've listened to so far. What about those of us who are no longer students? Then 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 you've not watched then you've not watched but I'm doing a lot of things then, outside then, then, then you've not watched the, the, the interviews. It's a lie. If if you say you've watched it closely and all of them are students, I said this is my second. This, this is a second. This my second. Oh, oh, then I have to give you the YouTube channel. Kofi came all the way oh, from okay. Ghana and Kofi was working with um um Cidicom. He was not a student. Um print. Dr. Prince or um, Ose Abuachi was also not a student. He was working. Oh. Um, um, what's Dr. B? That, that is the Indian that I interviewed, I think, last week. Yes, that is. She right. has a long name, and I agree that I call it Dr. G. Dr. G was also not a student. So it's been a blend of students and workers. Uh, yeah, so okay. it, it's not just for students. It's it's for whoever qualifies, right? You, you can be a student and you're qualified. Oh. You can also be a worker and you'll be qualified. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There are questions in the chat box. Oh, there are questions in the chat box. Yeah, I see. What we have here? The question is, what is the timeline for receiving the email from USCIS and approval? Wilson, that is the question. Over to you. I thought he was asking about uh, if we have a general timeline because well, my question is, on... what is the timeline from receiving the email from USCIS and approval? I mean, it depends, right? If Godson used premium processing, right? So premium right. processing is a little bit different. The timeline is, oh, for Wilson. Oh, good. It's for you. So it's not general. So oh, Wilson, okay. It's, yeah. It took eight days, actually. 
is it eight business days or eight working yeah, days eight or eight business calendar? days and then 11 days you know what i mean so it's 11 days but eight working business days so yeah so give or take give yourself one one week and then Thank you. you you get a, the good news from yeah. Thank you. and he's asking why are your applicants more of Ghanaian origin uh, right I think that's that's a legit question um it is not my hope that I don't serve other nations in fact I want to um I want to say that the very first non ghanaian that I hosted was um, last week that was from India. Um, I've served a couple of different um, origins, but really I would agree that most of my clients base are from Ghana. But um, in the coming days, it is my hope that some of the people that come on the Safa story changes more, like seven different people and from different countries, um, be it Nigeria, be it Kenya, be it wherever, like wherever they come from, because, and even Ethiopia, because those are some of the clients that are waiting for results. So fingers crossed. Mm. Yeah. Well, maybe you have to expand your territory and then, because, I personally talked to someone and then the person was like, maybe the price is too low. It may not be real. Maybe if you increase the price a little bit, people would try to. That's just by the way, maybe. You got yours, you want the price increase that people will take it serious. <laughs> exactly <laughs> my point. You got yours, so they should increase the price for others. In fact, no, I, have so to, I, have to, I have to take your, I have to take your, your, your suggestion seriously. I, I think I have to increase the price. That, that's legit. What, what do you think, Wilson? Not for the Ghanaians. No. <laughs> no, no. I, I guess we we'll, we'll, would we'll, would we'll still do it within reasonable, um, reasonable expectations and um, reasonable cost. Um, but I think it's a legit question about um. Most of the clients here have been from Ghana, and hopefully, uh, Rema Consult extends its territory. Like I said before, we've had one Indian, and, and that was a very great success, and um, because it wasn't from um, he she wasn't from Ghana, and and it is my hope that in the coming days, um, some of the clients that I have said that are not Ghanaians will be on this call, um, but yeah. Um, Maybe you should also spread the news to non Ghanaians so that they yeah. come to Rima Council. But yeah, we 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 don't aim to just um, help Ghanaians. The the aim is to help international students coming from um all over the world. Well, we are um, hitting to almost. Uh, oh, D D, do you want to talk? Okay. Oh yeah. So um. Thank you, Dr. Emmanuel. Um, I've gone through you, so uh, I'm waiting. So the thing is, um, I think the reason why it's more Ghanaian, it's um, like, that is where it started from, basically. And um, the truth is just that the people that have gotten it also are talking to the Ghanaian community. That's the way it is. So um, since we are more internationals here, I think um, we should spread it, our tentacles away from Ghana. So when they are talking, they should not talk to their um, Ghanaian friends alone. Because I remember I've talked with my Iranian friend. I've talked with my Ghanaian friend. I've talked with my Pakistani friend. So it's more about the people that are getting it now. Like, um, this is a way in which we can actually sell Rema. Not him selling himself. Like, um, people getting it themselves can also be the one that sells him. Because um, a lot of people, like, um, when you start going through um, Rema, you believe you don't have what it takes, but the way it does, it's more like magic. So you feel like, ah, what is this man doing? So I believe it's all that we need to spread him more and not him himself. So it's just like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola advertises itself. 
and people that drinks it, you feel refreshed. So I believe um, it's a point back to us also when we are getting like approvals, we should talk to people and not just the Ghanaian community alone, but we should spread the tentacles to other internationals in which in which we know they need it also. That's the way I see it. Thanks for the great work, Doc. Yeah, thank you. I think it's legit. So please go share it and make sure you're sharing it to all international students because there are a lot of different nation, um, um, origins from um, different places and wonderful international students. So please um, do that. Um, I, I won't talk about issue of fees on this call, but feel free to reach out to, I I'm going to put in the chat how you can reach out to Rema Consult and we'll be more than happy to be of help. Um, we've reached exactly to the hour um, and it's been nice having all of you here. Um, hopefully we meet um, sometime soon. Um, I'm very optimistic that in the month of April, there will be more of these sorts of stories coming up. And so um, if there is, if you have reached out, we would add you to our mailing list and then we will be more than happy to share those different success story as well. So that will be bye for now. Thank you.